announcing the world's first grown port network. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Svilin Rangulov, co-founder and CEO of Dynamics. Welcome back, Svilin. It's great to be here again. Remind us about what Dynamics does, and tell us about the Black Swan and what makes it unique among drones. Um, Dynamics was founded by myself and my brother. Uh, my brother is an aerospace engineer, and I studied economics. So about um, almost seven years ago, we saw the Amazon drones, and we thought that would be great for last mile. What, what if we do a drone for the middle mile, essentially a flying delivery van? Um, so that's what we focused on, and uh, we're now one of the leading companies in this segment, uh, essentially at the size of a Cessna two-seater, but carrying cargo without a pilot on board. What are the biggest challenges in the drone delivery business today? Well, for for a number of years, uh, the biggest challenge was regulations. Um, and th the fact that regulations were very limiting, uh, you know, you could only fly drones which were um, less than 50 pounds, uh, less than 55 pounds. Uh, you had to fly only during daylight uh, with a, a visual line of sight under 400 feet. This is very limiting to the whole industry. And then anytime you wanted to have an exemption, you have to go and speak to the regulator. And obviously there's so many businesses that want to go and do that. Um, then the regulators become overwhelmed with requests. And um, so, so, so the industry was really pushing for like uniform uh, uh, drone regulations, and that's finally uh, happening in Europe uh, on January first. Uh, there, there will be drone regulations which can, uh, you know, which can apply to all kinds of all sizes of drones, uh, much bigger than ours even. Um, and it, it, they're taking a very risk-based approach. So we believe that uh, a lot of our countries will follow Europe's lead. So this was the biggest challenge and we're happy to see it get sorted. Um, on the technology side, um, there have been challenges when it comes to the cargo sector, um, simply because it's, a, it's an industry that's unlike, let's say, um, you know, the other applications of drones, for example, for agriculture, for military defense, uh, surveillance and so on. Uh, cargo is extremely focused on um, the lowest possible cost. So it's almost like the customers, they don't care if you use a drone or a donkey or a balloon, they just want you to get it there as fast as possible and possibly for free, right? So that's new technology is never free, right? It always actually is more expensive than existing technology. And that's been the second biggest challenge for the industry, I believe. And it's the reason why we don't have such a big uh, adoption of drones. Um, as many people would have liked. Your drones depend on autonomous flight well beyond visual limits, correct? That's correct. We rather actually, um, we implement automated flights. Um, in our case, we only fly between airports. So we, we fly uh, a certain number of routes which are predetermined. So it's uh, very easy to pre-program them. And therefore the drone itself just manages the flight plan um, in an automated rather than an autonomous way. We, auto, autonomy first means that the, the drone would make the decisions. Uh, in our case, it's not, it's humans on the ground who make those decisions via satellites or other links. Dynamics just made an important announcement about creating a drone port network. Explain that. Um, so when we started, we uh, were very focused on building this aircraft. Uh, for cargo, you need to have an aircraft that is um, cheaper than what already exists, and that's very hard to achieve. It's one of the reasons why we called it the Black Swan, uh, to remind us how, how difficult it is to achieve it. And then, um, th then we realized that, okay, uh, we don't want to sell the drones. We want to be the operator, so drone as a service. But to do that, we need also supporting infrastructure. And um, our drone is a fixed wing drone, so it's not a vertical takeoff. Um, it, it needs a runway of about 1,300 feet. 
uh, and the runway doesn't have to be paved, but it's still a runway. Uh, so you need a certain amount of equipment. And then we realized um, that, okay, what if we standardize that equipment? What if we standardize the ground operations? Sort of like uh, the way a McDonald's kitchen looks the same everywhere around the world. So that's, um, that's really what this announcement is about. We've been working hard to attract uh, the first uh, airport partners uh, where we would base those drone terminals and we will be able to, uh, to operate the service between those cities. Um, we are announcing uh, that so far we've, we've signed up uh, 35 airports. We're announcing the first five of them uh, and they are in 11 countries in Europe and essentially each of them becomes a gateway to the whole other network. That's the great, uh, the great um, advantage of being of operating an unmanned fleet, where when the crew doesn't have to travel uh, with the device, it, it it's like moving chess pieces on a board. So especially in the times of COVID um, and and dealing with you know interrupted supply chains, border closures, and so on, if your um, community, if your country even has such a gateway, um, you could be sending stuff across the borders without a problem. Um, uh, and again, these, these 35 are all in Europe, but we have another 30 outside of Europe. Um, we haven't announced that yet, but we'll be uh, looking to build out that network uh, more and more in the coming months, so that by 2022, we, we can launch a, um, a a cargo drone airline uh, as a service, um, first in Europe, then the US and the rest of the world. So you can make deliveries in places where piloted aircraft can't reach? Yes, um, we can, because when we decided that we want to create a middle mile drone, we realized, okay, in the current air cargo uh, scenario, you have very big planes, you know, the most expensive vehicles uh, that are uh, flying between the most expensive pieces of real estate in the world, like the busiest airports. Um, and then there's so many communities which are underserved, they don't get regular service or not at all, simply because, you know, it makes no economic sense to send, a, you know, 30 ton or 60 ton or 100 ton um, vehicle there if there's not enough capacity to fill that flight. So um, we, we decided that we need to go for a smaller form factor and that's what led us to, um, to choose uh, these 800 pounds of capacity and uh, 1500 miles of range. So we can, um, you know, if, if you have, let's say one day, your daily capacity fluctuates, right? The, the customers, uh, the communities they produce or, uh, or import, a varied number across the week or across a month. So if today you have two tons, that means six flights for us. If tomorrow you have 12 tons, that's 36 flights. And you can easily adjust that um, when you have a number of smaller runways. So the other thing then we realized is, okay, if we want to serve those smaller communities, we better make the drone uh, village friendly. So uh, we, we worked a lot on you know, designing it so that the landing gear could support uh, landing on rough surfaces, on unpaved, you know, grass, gravel, so that it could be relevant even for, you know, places really off the grid. So what are the next steps for Dynamics and the drone port network? Um, so the next steps are in early 21, 2021, in January, February, we'll be uh, doing flight tests uh, we're, we're constructing the first full-scale prototypes. We'll be doing flight tests uh, after that. We'll be uh, then dedicating the rest of the year to uh, flight tests of the prototypes and also ground tests of the drone port equipment with our partners. Uh, so that in the beginning of 2022, we can start operating that service. In the meantime, we are applying to these uh, to obtain uh, these drone airline licenses in Europe um, and similarly holding talks with regulators around the world for all the other markets. Because uh, truth be told, you know, the laws of physics are the same everywhere, right? It's only the laws of men that may differ. And 
uh, the good thing about aviation is is the reason why it's so standardized is because the regulators uh, are are quite uh, you know rational thinking and they their main concern is uh, safety. So once uh, uh, the, the only way you can prove that is not with a good lawyer, you prove that with um, having a track record. Uh, so this is why these tests are really critical to us and to any emerging program. The more you fly safely, the more you have leverage to demonstrate that this new technology uh, can and should become part of life. Svilin Rangilov, co-founder and CEO of Dynamics. If somebody wants to find about more about your work, uh, maybe they want to connect with you. How can they do that? The best way to reach us is uh, visit our website at dronamics.com. That's D-R-O-N-A-M-I-C-S dot com. Um, and uh, there's a number of contacts there. They, they can reach directly myself and other team members. Thanks so much again for joining us, uh, Svillan, and happy first birthday to your daughter, Carolina. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course. And you can find more of my interviews right here or at tanyahall.net, YouTube, Spotify, and more. Thanks for watching.